Hello guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome to another episode. Today we are playing the American Tier 9 Premium Cruiser Alaska on the map Shards and the Domination Game Mode. It's the last replay of my backlog and hopefully I can focus on more recently released ships after this video. I'm always contemplating what kind of footage to show on my channel and I usually go for the close-ish games instead of games with just impressive numbers. This replay is no exception, don't expect any damage records but a reasonably close game instead. There will also be a decent amount of salt and I can't deny I can become quite salty at times especially after prolonged losing streaks or if my teammates do something particularly stupid, so please bear with me. Anyway, here's my commander build. Honestly, I'm not quite sure why I'm running survivability expert instead of heavy AP shells. Alaska's health pool is already really good for a tier 9 cruiser and although her tankiness suffered quite a bit from the removal of the fire prevention skill for cruisers, SE doesn't really improve your resilience against fires because fire damage is percentage based. So a bit of a potato build here, don't get me wrong, I think running SE is fine on cruisers like Zhao or maybe even Wooster where you don't have that much health right out of the box but Alaska's health pool should usually be sufficient to keep you afloat for the better part of any given battle unless you really screw up. In case you really struggle with fires in your large cruisers slash battle cruisers, there's always the option to take damage control system modification 2 in the fourth upgrade slot, but from my perspective propulsion modification 1 is the better choice here because the increased acceleration makes juking and dodging shells at medium and longer ranges a lot easier. Steering gears modification 1 is also a valid choice if you prefer a more mobile playstyle but without any upgrades to her engines or rudder. Alaska feels way too sluggish for my taste. By now you can probably tell that my diff mate and me were pretty unhappy about the initial deployment of our team. My Shimakaze and my Izumo ran away from Alpha, our Petro abandoned Charlie, but that won't stop our Yugumo from suiciding regardless. It's a rough start and I will never understand those players that completely leave their flank for no reason. At this point I think I already took unnecessary damage and missed a few opportunities to shoot because I was too busy spamming the well done command. What can I say, don't follow my example kids, if you're getting too salty to perform properly it might be better to take a break. Now it's too late though, we are already in the match. We went to Alpha because we can't allow the enemies to have this flank for free. We do have some support in the form of a Salem and an Iowa and you can see that the enemies also don't have that many ships out here. However, I don't feel like pushing directly into Alpha although the numbers seem to be even and I could technically bow tank the Jomba while contesting the cap. But we are still missing a Des Moines that hasn't been spotted yet. I suspect her to be somewhere in the vicinity and as long as I don't know her exact location I won't take any risks. We took a good chunk of HP away from the daring with our first salvo. Unfortunately I did overturn slightly to evade the incoming fire of the Jamba and I could swear I was holding down E to turn in to get all my guns on the daring again but apparently I didn't so it took me forever to get my A and B turrets online and the results of the follow up salvos were very disappointing. Without a friendly DD in the north our ships there will probably be running away from the Öland and the Kitakaze all game. Except for our Venezia of course which is yoloing into the majority of the enemy fleet as we speak. So we need to take advantage of the fewer numbers that the enemy send to the south and initiate a counter push here. Our remaining DDs are playing pretty aggressively, they already pushed into the enemy spawn and it looks like our lightning is about to rush the enemy Lenin which is probably not the play this early in the game. But I really hope that with the help of the Shimakaze they might be able to take out at least the Lenin and maybe the Jomba as well. 
We are radared, which means that the Moin is close to us and will mess with our plans to counter push. I'm glad that I didn't push into Alpha earlier because that probably would not have ended well with a reversing John Barr and a daring in front of me and a Des Moines on my left side. However, I don't want to engage the Des Moines in a bow in 1v1 fight. She has much higher DPM than me, so I did cut my engines, turned in towards the island and eventually start reversing to deny the Des Moines a line of sight once her radar runs out. I need my Iowa to take the lead here. Together we can easily deal with the Des Moines. At least if the Iowa switches to AP. I might be mistaken, but I think the salvo that just went over my head was high explosive. You really want to be shooting AP at a bow in Des Moines because all battleships with 16 inch guns and bigger are able to overmatch the 27 mm nose of the American heavy cruiser with ease. Meanwhile, we lost our second tier 10 ship. The enemy daring detonated our Salem right next to the cap. Really unfortunate if you ask me because we heavily outnumber the enemies on this part of the map and should be able to wipe the floor with them without taking any casualties. I'm not really sure what's going on in the north, but the bulk of the enemies will eventually arrive at Bravo or if we are lucky continue pursuing our BBs into our spawn. Either way, we need to be prepared for some kind of clash that's bound to be happening and I would like my team to not throw away their ships while fighting inferior forces. The Iowa forced the Des Moines back behind her island so we can finally move up. The Des Moines still has the angle to lob shells over the island and can still hit both me and the Iowa, but her current positioning will make it a lot easier for me to disengage and to close the distance to her without getting spammed excessively. So we will exchange a few salvos and I was curious to see what the Iowa was planning to do. If I were her, I would have just kept going forward to push the Des Moines and ask my Alaska to take the other way around the island to pincer the Des Moines. However, the Iowa decides to take the way into the cap, which means that I have to deal with the Des Moines on my own. That's honestly not too bad. The American tier 10 cruiser doesn't have a lot of options here apart from reversing. She should be able to eat an Alaska alive in a pure DPM race provided that she doesn't allow the Alaska to get too close. But once we get into broadening distance, Alaska holds all the cards with her high alpha strike potential and strong citadel protection. So the goal is indeed to get a jump on the Des Moines by going around that island. While I'm approaching her, I'm staying as close as possible to the island to not get spotted. And at the same time, I'm leaving a little bit of leeway to maneuver so I can avoid a ram in case the Des Moines decides to charge out of her little hidey hole before I make it around the island. We spot her with our Hydro and judging by her orientation, she doesn't seem to be expecting us, so she might have fallen for our little maneuver towards Alpha before we went dark. Interestingly enough, she didn't use her Hydro either to reveal what was spotting her, maybe because she was running defensive AA instead. So we caught her completely by surprise and in classic WoWs fashion, we death strike her without getting the death strike achievement. On the one hand, we are undeniably out of position after this kill and it will take us some time to get back to the front lines. But on the other hand, someone had to deal with that Des Moines because you can't simply leave a cruiser with that amount of firepower on your flank. Overall though, I'm not a big fan of going around these islands at all. Most of the time it completely takes you out of the battle for a considerable amount of time, especially when you are in a BB. On this occasion it was kinda okay I suppose because we are in a relatively fast cruiser and were able to remove a tier 10 cruiser from the game, but in general I won't recommend it. Now we do have some breathing room to assess the situation, both teams lost 4 ships each, the enemy still have the lead, but my team has the cap advantage for now. That being said, the Napoli is attempting to take the Bravo cap away from us. Which is a pretty bold play given the presence of our Petropavlovsk and the fact that our Shimakaze is perma spotting her. The Öland and the Kitakaze are still keeping most of our BBs busy, so apart from the Shima, the Iowa and me are the only ships of our team that have some freedom to advance and the two of us definitely need to put pressure onto the enemies to hopefully relieve our eastern flank a little bit. 
I'm intentionally excluding the Shima from this equation, cause you and me can probably already sense what will happen to her. I was pinging the Saint Louis and more or less desperately asking our Shima to turn back, but it's already too late, most likely the French cruiser has her hydro running and dodges the torpedoes of our Japanese destroyer with ease. I'm trying to save our DD, but the Napoli was also paying attention and smacks the Shima as well. The Saint Louis is giving broad Side in the process and we are able to kill her after she finishes off our Shimakaze. But the loss of our last destroyer definitely outweighs the destruction of a tier 9 cruiser that would have died one way or another. So we are on the back foot again. Somehow the Napoli managed to take Bravo in spite of being spotted almost all the time. Which is a shame since I'm pretty sure we had at least two ships that could have reset her. What's even worse is that with the loss of our Petro, the enemy DDs have free reign in the east now. I'm the only ship with anti-DD tools left, but I need to go to the center, so our Izumo and my diff mate in his Jean Bar are basically just food for the DDs at this point. I use my radar to see what the Napoli is up to. She's still sitting next to her little island in the cap, which is understandable because there aren't a whole lot of routes to escape. Hence, I definitely wanted to make sure to get eyes on her before she turns out and kites away. Hopefully my monarch is able to punish her while she turns out. I'm about to get a decent salvo on her as she tries to dodge the incoming fire of our British battleship. And considering that her smoke is on cooldown because she used it to take the cap, the Italian cruiser should go down any second now. I might have been able to pick up the kill myself if I had switched to HE here. This way my Iowa gets the kill but not without taking torpedoes. Obviously still many people don't know what to expect from the Napoli since she hasn't been released yet. So be advised she gets one quadruple launcher per side with a range of 13.5 kilometers. This could have ended worse though because my Iowa was so greedy to use all her guns instead of turning towards the Italian cruiser in expectation of torps. But then again their maximum damage sits at the modest 13,900 so she would have survived eating all four. Still it would have been less than ideal because I need my Iowa to be as healthy as possible with the Alsace approaching us. You really gotta love these scenarios where you already used a couple of your heals and the game is really close and then a more or less full health BB appears out of nowhere. Don't know what the Alsace had been doing all this time at Charlie but now she's committing to brawl our Iowa. This can end really badly because our Iowa is walking into a crossfire with the FDG on the 9 line and there's also the threat of torps so I will happily chill in the second line and assist from there. The safest bet for my American ally would have been just parking bow in in front of the Alsace instead of these wild maneuvers. Together we could have easily defeated the French BB without taking any risks. Even if the Alsace tried to ram, one of us could still try to get to her side. But as you know, one of the unwritten rules of BB gameplay is that you have to brawl at least once per match, even if it means throwing the game and especially if you haven't done anything before. My Hydro did pick up the Ulan's torpedoes, oh the good old days of friendly fire. The Alsace caught every single one of them, a surprise to be sure but a welcome one. Now you will have noticed that I ended up brawling myself, mostly because of said torpedoes. I wanted to be reasonably close to the Iowa to give her some warning time in case there were fishes in the water and I also wanted to give the Alsace something else to actively worry about. After the sinking of the Alsace I could have turned to my right to pursue the Öland through Bravo, but at that particular time I wasn't sure how many torpedoes the Öland can actually launch and if she had a wreck in reserve. In case she had another wreck a full right turn would leave me very vulnerable and a predictable turn like that makes dodging torps almost impossible in spite of running hydro. I was also concerned about the FTG catching me broadside in the middle of the turn so I opted for the safer play which means that the Öland got to escape. Turns out Öland has only two sets of three torpedoes 
which she all dumped into the Alsace less than a minute ago, so chasing her would have been somewhat safe apart from the risk of getting citadel by the FDG. Although I don't have a line of sight, I activated my radar regardless, hoping that our monarch at Alpha could take some shots at the Öland. Given her positioning, it's unlikely, but at least she knows where the Öland is going and hopefully won't get deathstruck all of a sudden. With my hydro and radar on cooldown, I'm not that eager to go after the Öland myself. Instead, we can use the island in the middle of Bravo to conceal us from the pushing FDG and we are able to take some nice chunks out of her broadside while being unspotted. My Iowa turned back towards Bravo instead of going for Charlie. I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of that decision either. With the cap still ticking for them, the enemy team only needs one kill and maybe another minute until the score climbs to 1000 points in their favor. And with my Izumo being stalked by the Kitakaze and the Ölan basically on top of the Monarch, we can lose this match in the blink of an eye. Fortunately, we should be able to kill the FDG any second now. That's a good example of how to not push in a German BB. The Friedrich went from 40k HP to basically zero in about 30 seconds. The kill will give us some breathing room again, but the match is still very much touch and go. Maybe you noticed that the Izumo in the background managed to evade both sets of Kitakazu torpedoes just a few moments ago, so my main concern remains the situation at Alpha. The Öland is committing to rush the Monarch. Keep in mind that this match happened before the occurrence of the torpedo aiming bug, so it should be next to impossible for our Monarch to evade those incredibly fast torpedoes at a distance of 5 kilometers. If our Monarch dies and the Öland survives, I don't see us coming back from this. You can see the torpedoes in the water. The only question is how many torpedoes will our Monarch take? It looks like she might survive. And she kills the Öland instead, wow. So this was probably a game-saving moment right there. Big props to the Monarch player. There is the saying, don't count your chickens before they are hatched, but the enemy team will need a miracle to come back from this. Once again, I don't think I agree with the decision-making process of the Öland player. There was enough time on the clock to play this differently namely taking a wider approach so that she would not have been spotted immediately after leaving her cover. But hindsight is always 2020, and if I had dealt with the Öland myself, I would not have had to worry about two random players deciding the outcome of the match. So in the meantime, we traded our Izumo for the enemy Amagi, which leaves the Kitakaze as the only remaining opponent. My Iowa will do the right thing and turn away from the DD. I, on the other hand, will move towards her so she doesn't get any funny ideas of taking Bravo back. I think I can speed up the gameplay at this point. We are gonna catch the Kitakaze with our radar, but she doesn't even make an attempt to fight back. I mean, it's a stock hull Kitakaze without survivability experts, so it's probably safe to say that she's piloted by a very new player. In the end, we don't kill her, but we force her to run off the map, and it's a GG. As I mentioned earlier, far from a monster game, but I hope it was still somewhat exciting to watch. 3000 base XP, so at least from a numerical standpoint, not a bad game at all. Please forgive my saltiness. If you hit the like button, I promise I'll be a good boy in the future. Anyway, <laughs> anyway thanks for watching, guys. I hope to catch you next time. See you soon and take care. The American Tier 10 Cruiser doesn't have a lot of options here, apart from... <laughs> And there's also the threat <laughs> hoping that our monarch at alpha could take some <laughs>